Good evening. Welcome to Discovery Church. How many of you ready to receive the Word of God today? Amen. You guys ready? But I found that God often meets that expectation that we have when we come into His presence. That that really, if you come in with that expectation to receive the Word of God, that 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 actually is it determines what kind of fruit that's going to be produced from the Word of God. And, and that that has to do a lot, I think, with the series that we're in with this deeper series it's it's actually not about the um and it's f- so funny in this series the we, if you've missed any of these we're in the final installment of this deeper series part four and we've done three of them and every one of these uh topics uh there have been some similarities to them if you haven't been around we're studying the parable of the soil and so jesus i'll catch you up just a little bit jesus tells this story of this sower and the sower is god and he kind of explains it in luke uh, chapter 8, and he says that the sower scatters seed, and it falls on different soils, and, and the soil is the condition of our heart, and the seed is actually the Word of God, and what's interesting in all of these weeks, you guys, that we've been studying this, every one of these different types of soil conditions, they heard the Word. You see, hearing is not the root of the problem. That's not the root of the problem of, of our relationship with God and, and, and wh- where we are today and how we are today. Hearing's not the problem, although it's important. I get it. I mean, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but that's not the root of the problem. The root of the problem isn't hearing. You don't need to hear more, okay? And the root of the problem that we have, like the root of it is not even like what we're doing, which is what our minds go to. Oh, I need to, especially this time of the year, I need to do better. I need to do more. Oh, I should do this instead of this, and I should work on this instead of that. That's not the root of the problem, really, which it's, it's, it's important. I mean, it is. Even James says faith comes, uh, that faith without the doing, right? Faith without the works is, is dead. I get it, but that's not the root of your problem. What Jesus is like teaching us in this story he told of this soils that the real problem, the real root of the problem of why fruit is not being produced in our life is the condition of our heart. It's the soil, it's the condition. Are we, are we ready to receive the word of God? That's, that is the root of the problem. And in this series, honestly, every message in this series, all I've tried to do is to get your heart in a posture, in a condition that this year, like this year, when you hear the word of God, whether it's in your own devotion time, whether it's a revelation, just a rhema moment driving down the road, or it's a Sunday where you hear the message being preached, that this year your heart would be so ready that that word would travel through your ears into your mind and deeper into your heart so that it would actually bear fruit in your life. Now, we would go deeper this year, deeper than we've ever gone before in our relationship with God. And so wherever you're at in your relationship, that the, the deeper is and the the idea here is just take that next step, whatever that looks like. For some of you, it might, be, it might be just giving your whole life to Jesus, like going all in. That might be deeper for you. That might be the step where you just say, okay, I'm going to finally stop playing games with this, and I'm just going to go all in. For others, it might be a step of like baptism next month when we do it. Maybe that's your next step, but whatever that is, take that next step and go deeper. So I hope you catch up online if you missed any, because we, we looked at these different soil conditions. The, we, we talked about one of the soil conditions that was like the, that proximity was the problem, right? And that it's the hardness of our heart, the path that we talked about. We need to remove some rocks from the soil and take our next step and reproduce ourselves. That was the purpose of the seed. And this last installment of the series, we're going to look at this last seed uh, that fell and where it fell. Jesus says this last seed, the final seed, fell among weeds, and those weeds stand for those who hear. There it is again. Hearing's not your problem. That's not not the root of the problem. But as they go on their way, they are choked. Those The weeds choke out the joy of God. There are weeds in our life that choke out the life of the Spirit, the peace of God, the purpose of God, life's worries, riches, and pleasures. And because of that, they don't mature. So if you want to go deeper in your walk with God, if you want the seed of God's word to actually produce fruit in your life. Here's what those weeds represent. Listen, those weeds represent the relationships in your life that are choking out the life of the Spirit. That every one of us have have weeds in our garden and that that are 
choking out the, the joy of God, the purpose of God that are taking from us instead of adding to us. So honestly, if you want to go deeper in your relationship with God, which I know a lot of you do, then we need to write this one down. This is, this is the, the last installment of the series. I need to choose my relationships carefully. I need, if I want to, look, your relationship with God is inseparable from your relationship with people. These, the, you cannot separate those. You cannot have a deep, intimate, powerful relationship with God and, and have weeds in the garden and have relationship with people that are choking out, that are not allowing you, as Jesus said, to mature. There are some people in our lives, I believe, that are not allowing us to mature in the things of God. And if you want to go deeper this year, hey, I'm, I'm going to challenge you. Then we need to make better relationship decisions. We, we need to make better relationship decisions because you are where you are today and who you are today, mostly because of the relationships that you've chosen. That's the truth. And I don't exaggerate that at all. I know preachers exaggerate a lot, but I don't exaggerate when I tell you this, okay? Your relationship decisions are the most important decisions you will ever make in life. You are who you are today and where you are today because of the relationships. Some of them you chose. Some of the relationships you chose. Some relationships you inherited. You, could, you had no say in the matter, okay? It's just they came with the package, all right? That's just how it is. But that's where you are. It's, it's who we are today uh, and you know the word, a lot of you, like you hear the word, that's not, that's not the root of the problem, but we, we surround ourselves with the wrong people, with the wrong influences, and it's choking the life of the Spirit out of us from bearing fruit. Proverbs 27, verse 19, says like this, a mirror reflects a man's face, but if you really want to know what, a, what someone's like, that's, you show me your friends, I'll show you your future, okay? You really want to know what someone is like, it's by the kind of friends he chooses. I'm telling you, you start, you start working on your life. Weeds, weeds are attracted to good soil. Okay, You start working on your life this year and getting your heart condition right, get closer to Jesus, I promise you, you're going to attract some weeds in your life. The moment you start bearing good fruit, insects and pests are going to come try to eat you up. It's going to happen. It just it, it, it attracts that into, into your life. Um, we have the wrong people closest to us, possibly, influencing us in the wrong direction. And uh, if you want to just not hear the word but go deep in your relationship with God, then this year, hey, guys, it's inseparable. You, you have, we have to make wise relationship decisions. We have to, we have to uproot some of the weeds in our life. This, this message, out of all the messages in the series, this is the most practical message. It's going to be so, all of it's going to be practical. You're going to be able to apply this to your life. Let me get really practical in this. I actually changed this message Thursday afternoon. I had a different message, but the Lord was moving me in a different direction. I, I think it had to do with, there has been hundreds of people commit their life to Christ since Christmas here at Discovery. We have added several hundred people to the church, to, to the church since Christmas. Christmas. Isn't that awesome, you guys? Give God some praise for that. I mean, God is just so faithful. But I wanted to, I wanted to teach this message because I so want you to, I want you to grow this year, man. I want you to go deep with God. I want, I want this word of God that, that you're hearing and you're receiving to produce some life-changing results. And that can only happen if you choose the right relationships, if you choose your relationships carefully and get some of the weeds out of your life. And not only, not only remove some weeds out of your life, but you actually have to put the right relationships around you. Okay? Proverbs chapter 13 says it like this. He who walks with the wise grows wise. And we talked about that. What wisdom is. Wisdom isn't, isn't knowledge. That's their two say. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. Wisdom is applying that which you already know. And see, that's that's the problem for most of us. The problem isn't like the hearing. We already know it. The, pro the, the problem is, man, I need to do that which I already know. How do I? Why, that's what wisdom is. And so the Bible is telling us, you want to you get some of that in your life? You want to apply the things that you already know are right? You already know it's the most important thing. You already know that's a value of your life. You want to start doing that which you already know? Get around some people 
who are doing that which they already know they should do, and you'll start doing what you already know you should do. Okay, that's what he's saying there. If you walk with the wise, you'll go wise. But a companion of fool, uh, fools gets choked out. Can't you picture that? Okay. Get a companion of fools suffers harm. They suffer harm. So here's what I want to do. Getting really practical. I, wanna, I want to show you why you need a group in your life. I know we've added a whole bunch of people to Discovery Church, and this is a this is one of our, uh, our cultural DNA values that we do life together. And it's not just a program of the church. Honestly, we do groups so that so it's part of the process to get your heart ready, to posture your heart so that you can go deep, so, that, so God can do something transformational in your life. So let me, let me kind of show you why you need some groups in your life, why maybe you need to uproot some weeds and put some right relationships around you. Take some notes with me, you guys, why we need a group. Number one, we need a group because we got to make up for our weaknesses. Every one of us have weaknesses. You guys, I have weaknesses. You have weaknesses. Actually, that's by design. God made it that way. No one person has all the strength. No one person has all the talent. No one person has all the gifts. No one person has all the time, has all the energy. God did that on purpose so that you would need other people to succeed. And if you think that you can accomplish your life, if you think you can accomplish God's dream for your life alone, you better go back to God and get the right dream. Because God will never give you a dream for your life that you can accomplish by yourself. God, ne- God, does, God doesn't give a, God gives God-sized dreams that, that are not self-fulfilling, that you cannot fulfill yourself, that you would need other people in your life to actually make up for your weaknesses. Paul says it this way in Romans chapter 1, verse 12. He says, I want us to help each other with the faith we have. Hey, your faith? Paul says, is going to help me because I don't always see it the way I should see it. I don't always believe it when I can't. I mean, I need your faith to help me when my faith is weak. I need you to encourage me when I'm down and when I'm out. But guess what? My faith will help you when you get down. That's, we need other people that have our back. We need other people to help us in our weaknesses. And so this is something I've done intentionally from the very beginning of Discovery Church. I've, I've tried to focus the things that I know how to do well, that I'm good at, I do. Anything that I didn't know how to do well, I let Pastor Brennan do it. That's what our Pastor Daniel do it, our Pastor Veronica do it, someone else is going to do it. Because, because we, I want to go deep, church, and I want to take you deep, and I can't do that alone. And guess what? You can't do it alone either. You need other people. You need a group in your life. You need healthy people, a group in your life to make up for your weaknesses. Here's the second reason why we need a group. To bring out the best in us. We need some, a group to bring out the best. Now, there are some people in your, in your life that are really good at bringing out the worst in you. Don't look at them. Don't look at them right now. But you know who I'm talking about, okay? You might have brought them with you. I'm sorry. But there are some people that just, that do, they bring out... The worst in you, and I hope the Holy Spirit speaks to you in this message, man, because this is so huge for you to go deep, man, in your relationship with God. These were, there are, listen, there are some relationships in your life that probably need to be severed. There are some relationships in your life that are choking out the life of the Spirit, that are choking out your purpose, that are, that are choking out, as Jesus said, like, uh, un, that you're unable to mature in the things of God, because there's the wrong relationships around you. There's some, and I hope the Holy Spirit identifies some things to you. And, and if not severing relationships, I think at, at least, at the very least, some of our relationships need to be redefined. That we just redefine the influence I'm going to allow you to have in my life, that I redefine the amount of time I'm going to be investing in this relationship because I need to be around people who are bringing out the best in me. I need to be around people who believe the best in me, see the best in me, and call out the best in me. That's what I need, and that's what a group and healthy relationships will do for you. And I'm going to show you what to look for. At the end of this message, towards the end, I'm going to give you the four things to look for when you're choosing Friends, when you're choosing your closest relationships, the people that you are putting closest to your most intimate friends, I'm going to show you what the Bible says, what you should choose. 
and who you should choose to bring out the best in you. But I need a group, you guys, to compensate for my weakness, to bring out the best in me. Ever since the beginning of Discovery, you guys, I want you to know this. I've been in a small group. Every season of Discovery Church, I am connected to a group because I need it. I need people to cover my weakness. I, 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 need, I need people who are going to bring out the best in me, man, and, and, and speak faith into my life. All right. And honestly, when I go to groups, we have all kinds of groups. There's all kinds of groups for all kinds of people. There's Bible study groups and fun groups and stuff like that. And I've been to Bible study groups. I've been to the fun groups. But I like going to the fun groups. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I like going to groups so I can have some fun because I study a lot. I study a lot. And then, so when I want to like, when I want to have some community, I, I try, I, when, every time I do it, every time I go to the study group, whether it's a Bible study group, Everyone asks me questions, and I end up being the leader. I'm not the leader of this group, man. I came to receive. Somebody help me. I want, I'm just here to breathe, man, and come on. So, so I go to groups. So I could just have, so I could play some basketball or something, man, and, or, or play some games or do something, but I want to be around people. I need to be in a group, you guys. I do, and so do you. You need to be around people who, who are going to make up for your weaknesses and who are going to bring out the best in you. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. I love how this translation says it. Just as iron sharpens iron, friends, look at this. You ought to underline or circle these two words. Friends, sharpen and shape each other. Okay, that's what, if, if your friends are not sharpening you, if they're not creating a cutting edge, making you sharper, if they're not shaping you into who God has called you to be, they're not your friend. They're not, now, they can be an acquaint, acquaintance, okay? But I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you position, man, your life and your heart to go deeper this year in your relationship with God. And it's connected. It's so connected. Those close friends that you're, call, that you're spending the most time with, that you're, that you're bringing in closer, they need to be people who sharpen you and who shape you into who God has called you to be. Here's the next thing. And why we need a group to get more done. And this one is just so, we need, we need people in our life to get more done. It's, uh, look, one, two people can get more done than one. Four people can get more done than two. Ecclesiastes has like a whole chapter. Ecclesiastes chapter four um, has a lot to say about this. Here's one of the verses, verse nine. I'm going to show you a few verses in Ecclesiastes here with the next couple of points. He says, two people are, say those words out loud. Two people are always better. Always better. Man, I hope that you hear God's word and you buy into that. I, I, last time I preached about community, and I, I used this verse a while back. Afterwards, a guy came up to me and told me, you know what, Pastor? I've been in situations where it wasn't better. And I know some of you are thinking that. I know some of you. You're probably like a dominant personality. And you're like, you know what? It ain't always better. It's better if I just do it myself. Listen, I pro please buy into the word of God. I'm talking about the healthy relationships, the right relationships. I'm not talking about the weeds in your life. I know those people who, who cover your weaknesses, who bring out the best in you. Look, two people are always better. God created you this way. They're always better than one because they can accomplish more by working together. That's how God created us, that we would get more done together. All right, that one's obvious. Here's the next one. To help me get back up when I stumble. You, you need a group, you guys, to help you get back up when you stumble. Now, you may have God's dream for your life, but that doesn't mean you, you go directly there, does it? No, you're going you're gonna to take some detours along the way. You're going to have some failures. You're going to fumble and stumble and grumble. You're going to do all that kind of stuff on the way to God's purpose for your life in this journey called life. You are going to stumble. In fact, let me ma let you make you feel a little, bit, a little bit better. James says it this way, we all stumble in many ways. Every one of us, you guys, are going to stumble. And that's okay. It's actually okay if you have someone there to help you up. That's okay. The righteous fall seven times, but they get back up, the Bible says. It's okay. Like, it's actually part of the process. The stumbling, the fumble, all that stuff. It's okay if you got someone there to pick you back up. But you better watch out if you're all alone. Who do you have to encourage you when you're down or when you're offended and you're hurt and the enemy has lied to you and bought into those lies? Who do you have to encourage you? In fact, the reason why, if you guys even think back maybe into times where, where you kind of got offended or hurt or you went through some trialing experience, the, the reason why a lot of you stayed down and out for as long as you stayed down and out was because you didn't have the right relationships around you. 
You didn't have the right people to reach, to, to, to catch you when you were falling. You didn't have the right people that said, nah, I got your back. No, no, no. That's a lie of the enemy. You, had, you didn't have people to help you when you stumbled along the way. That's what the next verse says in Ecclesiastes. If you fall, a companion can help you up. That's what a group does. That's what those healthy relationships do. When you get the weeds out of your life and you replace them with the right people, they help you when you're down. They help you when you're weak. They help you when you're falling. But if you fall by yourself, that's when you're in real trouble because you got no one to help you. And that's, that's when you get offended. That's when you let offense creep in. That's when you let hurt creep in. And that's where you isolate yourself. You need people. You need a group to help you get back up when you stumble, here's, a, here's the final one here. We need a group to resist attacks. Okay, spiritual attacks, spiritual warfare, honestly, all kinds of attacks, you, to people's attacks. You're gonna, you're gonna, if you live for God, I promise you, you're going to get critics and cynics in your life. It's going to happen. When, whenever you say, look, I'm going to seek first God's kingdom and God's righteousness, you are people who don't seek God's kingdom and God's righteousness and have different priorities then you, and maybe your seeking of the kingdom first, affects their priorities, a personal gain or selfishness, they're going to they're gonna criticize you, okay? It's, it's gonna, it will happen, and you just got to determine, in life, like, make your decision. Who, who are you going to be criticized by? Because you're going to be criticized in life. You just got to decide which, who's going to be. I've decided I'm going to let small-minded people criticize me. I'm going to let people who, who are not, who have, have no idea about the kingdom of God, they're going to criticize me, and I'm not going to care about it. You know what I, what I care about, the opinions I care about? The people who do seek first the kingdom of God. That's the people. I, you can't please everybody. You can't. You can't even please yourself. <laughs> okay? You ain't going to please anybody else. You're hard enough to please. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 4, here's that next, next verse, verse 12. By yourself, you're unprotected. And that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you isolated by yourself. He wants you on that, on that island. An enemy can attack you and defeat you, but two can stand back to back and resist. And a team of three is even better, like a triple braided rope, which does not break easily. The more strands you have in a rope, obviously, the stronger it is. When you're by yourself and you get criticized and somebody attacks you and attacks what you're doing, you get hurt, you get offended, you get discouraged, you're more likely to give up. You're more likely to throw in the towel, but you've got the right group around you. They'll help you resist the attacks of the enemy. They're attacks, attacks of other people. Hey, write these date, dates down. Small groups start next week on February 3rd. They run to May 5th. The si sign-ups for these groups, the registry is open today. You can go online today and see all the small groups. You can download our Discovery Church app, see all the small groups. This is our season one, the first season of the year. We have three seasons. We divide up the calendar into three seasons. And so we start and we stop small groups three times a year here at Discovery Church. Kind of give a rest, a break. That's what we've been on in the holiday season, starting a new year with prayer and fasting. And now we jump back in. And there is a small group, I promise you, that's right for you. We got all kinds of groups. We got men's groups and women's groups and couples groups. We got 50 plus groups and singles groups. There's just, there's all kinds. I'm really excited about our our Wednesday night group. There's, there's a group that we're starting right here at Discovery, and we're doing a Wednesday night called Freedom Night. And it's, we're combining all of our freedom groups, all of our recovery and freedom groups that have to deal with addiction, anxiety, and depression, and grief, and even like marriage enrichment. If your marriage needs to, some life breathed into it, you need some help, marriage enrichment is going to be offered. We're calling it Freedom Night. We're going to begin with worship on Wednesday night. And then we're going to break off into different small groups, depending on whatever the stronghold is, whatever the area of freedom that you need. And uh, I'm just, I'm really stoked. We, we're turning this church on Wednesday nights into a hospital for the hurting. There's, there's a group for you. And so when you go online, I'm going to be honest with you, okay? You go online and you're going to see a lot of like reasons why the group, like this is what it studies, gospel of Mark and, and basketball, or we're going to play this game, or we're going to go dancing, and there's all kinds of groups and stuff, okay? You're going to see all these reasons and what kind of studies. I'm going to be honest with you. It's a trick. I'm just being honest. It's, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we do all that. So I'm hoping that you'll go, oh, that sounds cool. I should do that. My, I'm only trying to get you connected to life-giving relationships. That's the whole purpose of small groups. 
It's not really to do the study, which the study is going to help you out. It's not really to play the game. It's going to be fun. It's really to get you around good people who can bring out the best in you. Amen. That's what the, that's the whole, that's our whole goal, okay? And, and I, I need you to know that if you want to go deeper this year, man, if you want that kind of soil, if you want that kind of heart that receives the word of God, and produces fruit, then you need to choose your relationships carefully. Um, I want to spend the next couple of minutes we have together, you guys, giving you these four kind of what the Bible says, how to choose wise relationships. And honestly, this is why I changed this part of the message, because I'm going to give you what I, this is the, the kind of deciding factors that what I choose, the relationships that are on my inner circle. And these are biblical reasons the, of, of who you should choose for your innermost friendships, your closest, the people who are going to be influencing you. How can you choose better relationships this year and go deeper than you've ever been? Choosing your relationships wisely. Here they are. Write some notes, you guys. Number one, we need to choose people who love and serve God. Man, this is where we got to start. That's who should be in our closest circle. People who love and serve God. Now, you may know your God's dream for your life. You may know your spiritual gifts. You may, you may be like, like serving, all this stuff. But I'm telling you, listen, if you are in the wrong relationships, you're going in the wrong direction this year. Are you hearing me, you guys? Okay. You can, you can, you can, have, a lot of, you can have a lot of skill. You can have a lot of things going right for you. But if you have, the, if the people closest to you do not love God, and serve God, you are going in the wrong direction. All right, let me say it this way. At the end of the year, you will have regrets. And I'm trying to help you, church. I really am, man. This is so practical. Just, and it's so simple, right? Does this make sense? The people closest to me should be people who love and serve God. Let me speak to the young person, the young people in the audience today. Can I, can I help you out here for a moment? Don't, don't go missionary dating. You know what missionary dating is? It's when you go out with her, you go out with him in the hopes of winning them to Jesus. God's, oh, I'm gonna, I'm a, God's gonna use me as a missionary in their life, and I'm gonna say, they're, look, that dude will say anything and everything to get you, okay? And after he's got you, he'll go back to his ways. I promise you, it doesn't work. The Bible says, do not be unequally yoked don't don't do it don't do it the people that you are allowing in close to you need to love god this year they need to serve god this year let's make some better choices guys let's end up in a different place this year second corinthians chapter six actually don't be unequally yoked i love this translation the living bible says just plainly don't team up just don't team up don't team up with with those who reject god he's talking about unbelievers now i'm not talking about living a christian bubble please don't don't hear that like that's not what i'm saying i'm talking about your innermost closest friends okay those people who are you you're allowing to influence you the people that you're actually investing in and they're investing into you the people you spend most of your time with don't team up with people who reject god don't do it you need to surround yourself with people who love and serve God. Because how can you make a partnership out of right and wrong? That's not a partnership. That's war. Can light be friends with darkness? How can Christ and Satan have anything in common? Now, if you're, not, if you're already married, don't go home and tell your spouse, your wife, your husband, Pastor Jason said, I can't be unequally yoked. You out of here. Peace out. Cut, <laughs> cut the cord. He said I need to sever some relationships. No, no, no. That's not, that's not what I'm saying, okay? You need this message 10 years ago. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, that's a different message. What I am saying, what I am saying, that this year, if you want to go deeper, okay, you need to choose your relationships wisely. And, those, and it, it starts here. You need to choose people who love. And don't just say they love God, right? You need to choose people who actually love God and serve God. That they're serving God. They're showing they love God. Because 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says this. Don't be misled. Don't let them fool you. Yo, no, no. It's just, they're just, they're just my friend. They've been my friend for so long. Oh, they're so good. We hang out together. Don't be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Don't be misled, guys. I'm just trying to help you get your heart ready. Get some weeds out. Get some weeds out of your life. Get the right relationships in. 
Because whether you know it or not, I hope God speaks to you today. Those relationships, good or bad, they're affecting your future. They're contributing to your destiny in ways that you don't even comprehend. Here's the second thing, that the kind of people that we choose. Here, number two, choose people who are growing in character. Choose people who are growing in character, in spiritual character. You know, talent will only take you so far, but character will take you to the end of your life. Character will take you to the finish line, man. There's, there's a lot of talented people who rise up, flare, and burn out, okay, because they got a lot of talent, but no character. You know, character can be, can be seen by, by how, you, how you treat the people who you think can't help you, who you think can't hurt you, more than, more than how you treat the people you think are important. You know, what? that's what reveals your character, how you treat people that you think can't help you, can't hurt you. Or, or one person said, character is who you are in the dark, in the secret place, not who you pretend to be in the open. It's who you are when nobody else is looking. And, and this, you got, this is the power of God's word, man. The power of God's word, when, it, when it's on fertile lands, on fertile soil, it has the power to change you. It has the power to change your thoughts, to change your beliefs, to change your attitude. It has the ability to change your character from the inside out. Here, let me, let me show this to you. I mean, because you got to watch some things here. you got to watch out. you got to be careful of the relationships. You need to watch your thoughts because they lead to your attitudes. Hey, you got to watch your attitudes because they lead to your words. Now be careful. Hey, watch those words because they lead to your actions. Hey, watch your actions because those things lead to your habits. Watch your habits because they form your character. Hey, watch your character because that determines your destiny. Hey, this is why you need to choose people who are growing in character because, look, they're, you, in ways that you don't understand, it is determining your destiny. I need to be around people who have good, solid character. And when we talk about character, there's, there's three things you need to look for. Three things. Let me give them to you. Three different scriptures. The first is integrity. If you want God to bless your life, you've got to live with integrity. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9 says, People with integrity have a firm footing. Man, you can't knock that person down. I love what it says, but those who follow crooked paths will slip and fall. You see, integrity is not just like, like being honest. Integrity is actually staying true to the path that God has you on. You don't go off on tangents. You don't go off on, on trying to fulfill other purposes. You know your purpose. You know who you are, okay? The first thing you want to look for is integrity. The second thing you look for when you look for people with growing in, in character is humility, Humility. And humility is one of these prerequisites of God, man, the, that, that if you want God's favor and blessing on your life, Proverbs 3 says it this way, that God has no use for conceited people. Don't you like that? God, God has no use for conceited people, but he shows favor to those who are humble. Look, if you want God's favor on your business, you want God's favor on your relationship, you want God's favor on your dream, then humility is a prerequisite. And you've heard me say it before. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. That's all it is. Humble people don't go, oh, I'm so bad. I'm just, I'm such a terrible person. No, that's false humility. That's not true humility. Humble people just don't think less of themselves. They just don't think of themselves that much at all. That's what humility is. Okay, people that don't have humility, they walk into a room, they go, what are people thinking about me? I wonder what they're thinking about me. That's the opposite of humility. Because a humble person walks in a room and doesn't think about, hey, what are they thinking about me? A humble person walks in the room and says, what can I do for them? They just don't think about themselves. That's what humility is. People who are selfless. That's humility. and you, It's one of the prerequisites for God's blessings. And it's, it's one of the attributes that form character, integrity, humility. The third thing that you want to look for in character is generosity. Because a generous, generous people will be what? will be blessed. And I'm not talking about financially. I'm not talking about get around people who buy you lunch all the time. <laughs> They're fun. I mean, that's all right. If you got that, good for you. But that's not what I'm talking about, okay? I'm talking about people who are generous with their time, generous with their, with their energy, giving it, generous with their praise and with their affirmation, people that are just that are generous with their, with their life, man. These three things, integrity, humility, and generosity. Those, those three things are what the Bible calls godliness. That's godliness. 
Look what the Bible has to say. Proverbs, or Psalm chapter 92, that godly people. Anytime you see that in the Bible, I want you to think character. That's what, that's what the Bible's talking about. Godly people, as characters, people of integrity, humility, generosity. That those people with character will grow and flourish like palm trees, even in old age. They will still bear fruit. And they will stay fresh and green. Amen, somebody? Amen. Amen. Here's number three. The kind of people that we need to choose. Choosing our relationships wisely. Number three, choose people who do what is right, even when it doesn't feel good. You want to put people around you that choose what's right, even when, when it's not best for them. People who choose what's right when it is hard. You want to, that's who you want, even when it hurts, when it costs you. If you want God's blessing on your life, I'm, I told you, this is going to be really practical today, okay? If you want God's blessing on your life, this is another prerequisite. To do what's right, even when it hurts. To do what's right, even when no one's looking, because you know God sees. That's who you want to in your life, people who live that kind of character and integrity. Deuteronomy 12, 28 says, if you are careful to obey whatever God commands, then you will be doing what is right and good in God's eyes. And then, then he'll help you. Then he's going to show up in your life. And then he even, he even gives a promise. And even your children, he says, will be successful. That, that promise of success from God, you guys. But he says, you got to be willing to do the right thing. Even, even when, it, when it hurts, even, even when it doesn't feel good, you got to be willing to do what is what's right. Psalm chapter 34, 19. It says, people who do what is right, though, they may have many problems. You know, God didn't promise you a problem-free life. He didn't promise you a problem-free life. In fact, Living for God can produce even more problems in your life. Okay? It can. It can. We talked about, I just, I just, if you go to work and you say, you know what, boss, I can't do that. That's unethical. That goes against my, my age. I can't do it. You may get fired for living for God and putting his kingdom priorities first. Because if you, people who do what's right, they, it's, you're still going to have problems. But check this out. The Lord says, I'll solve them all for you, though. Amen. You just seek first Amen. God's kingdom. And his righteousness. Do us right even when, it's, even when it hurts, church. Even when it hurts. And God says, I'll cover you. I'll, I'll, cover, I'll cover the rest. It's, it's one of the prerequisites to look for in relationships. It's one of the prerequisites in, in God's blessing and success on your year. Do us right even when it hurts, church. And then here's the last one, number four. Choose people who speak and live by Faith. I mean, that's the kind of people I want to surround my life with. People who speak faith, man. Who People who are speaking things that are not as though they were. People who are speaking encouragement and speaking life and speaking favor and speaking God's word that they just got faith on their lips, man. You know why? Because the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's, that there's power in those words being spoken, man. It actually has power to produce fruit in our lives. That we eat the fruit of those words that we speak. I want to be around people that speak faith. And not only speak faith, but they live faith. They walk faith. They don't only talk about stories of what God did yesterday, but they got, they got things they're believing God for. That's who I want around my life, man. I want to be about, around faith filled risk takers for Jesus. I want to be around people that are bold in believing God to do greater things in their life. That's who I, that's who I want rubbing off on me. You gotta, you gotta just look at your relationships. And go, okay. Who do I, who do I want to look like? Is that who I want? You, there's a study that says that that you are the sum total of your five closest friends. Your five, the, the, the five closest, you just the five closest people you spend the most time with, the closest friends that you have. That's who you are. That is where you are today. If you want to go deeper, man. If you want to go deeper with God and your relationship with God, it's connected. It is so connected to those relationships. There are some weeds, some things that need to be severed, some things that need to be redefined even possibly. But there are some, there are some right relationships that we need to get in our life to cultivate the right soil so that when we, when we hear the word or when you're studying the word 
or when God speaks to you through that whisper, it produces the fruit. You know, Isaiah says, that God says through the prophet Isaiah, that the word that proceeds out of my mouth will accomplish the purpose that I sent it out to do. It will not return back to me void. That is the purpose of God's word in your life, to produce an intended result. That's his purpose. And we need it. All, we, all you need to do is get your heart right. That's it. It's, it's, you don't need to hear more. You don't need to study more. You don't need to try harder. I mean, those are all great things. I promise you it's not your deepest issue. The, the root of the problem is our heart. It might be proximity or, or the hardness therein, like, some, like that other message, or, or maybe the, the rocks in our soil that we need to uproot and take a next step, or, or maybe it's something like today where there's some relationships, there's some weeds that are choking out the life of the Spirit of God, not allowing us to mature, to go deeper in our walk with God. Hey, let's, let's, can we, can we bow our heads and close our eyes?